Matt Stone and Trey Parker are here. They are the creators of the hit animated television series South Park, set in their home state of Colorado. This year, for the first time, South Park won an Emmy for an episode called Best Friends Forever. Here is a look at part of that program. I am pleased to have the two creators at this table for the very first time. Welcome. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Now, tell me what it is that, I mean, tell me what that represents. <laughs> Mostly just a good frickin' Jew joke. Yeah. <laughs> We're really proud of that part of that show. Um, there, did, did somebody once say to you, there's nothing off, off, off base, but you can make no jokes about the Nation of Islam? They, well, they, told they us we tried to say that, and then we did it. <laughs> uh, yeah. They told us we couldn't do an entire show about it, but I think they were just concerned about our safety. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, someday we'll do it, though. I don't know. Yeah. But, but nothing else is uh, out of bounds. No, and like that, that, that episode was the one, uh, it was basically obviously in reference to Terry Schiavo, and yeah. it came out the week that that was hitting this like huge uh, national furor. Um, yeah. But that's, I, I think that, like that episode was one of our better ones because we always seem to do topical stuff best when we, in other words, like uh, when we do it with our own characters, like that 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 episode never mentioned the word Terry Schiavo, right. and if you'd never heard about that whole uproar or didn't, you know, yeah. it, it didn't matter, you'd still get it. You know, it still was a, you know, a regular. It was a story about a boy who was being kept alive. On a How did this thing come into being? Well, it's it's actually pretty amazing because of the way we've we've always done the show, but now we after doing it for nine years, we've got it down to the art form of uh, you know the show airs on Wednesday, the Thursday before that. We, Matt and I, go to work early in the morning with the writers, and we go, okay, what do we do this week? I mean, it's, it's, it's a weekly, it's just like Saturday Night Live, basically. Like, yeah. We don't know Start what we're doing. Every week. Start over every week, don't know, don't plan ahead at all. And we all sat down, and, and you know, I remember it was, it was when her tube had been removed, and everyone was waiting around to see if she was going to die. And I was just like, you know, guys, I've never seen a bigger news story. Like, this is on every channel, and it's just insane, you know. And, 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 so it was just early in the morning on Thursday, and we said, how can we do a Terry Schiavo episode? And then the ideas start flying, and by around noon, you know, we start getting ideas. And, and the way it works is that we come up with a couple funny scenes. We put them into animation right away because we got to get the crew going. And then Friday, we work on it some more. We work on it Saturday and Sunday. By Sunday, Monday, we're just staying up all night, and we just about kill ourselves week after week. Yeah, but do you two do the same thing, or do you divide up responsibility in some way? Uh, well, I mean, it's... It, it changes week to week, but it's it's pretty much we have it pretty much down. I mean, we're both in the writers' room. Right. We come up with the ideas. Uh, we both do voices. Trey directs, yeah. and pretty much edits every episode. I mean, it's very concentrated in around the two of us. So it's like we can do a very tight production. Yeah, but, and everything is in one building, so it's great because on a Tuesday night, say even before the show, we always deliver the show Wednesday morning. You know, yeah. and that it's going to air. And on Tuesday night, we're always there at three in the morning. Going, oh, how can we change the end, change the end, rewrite it, animate it, run in, do the voices, put it in, you know, and, and the whole process. Yeah, we do the voices out of necessity, not because we think we're great voiceover artists. <laughs> yeah, it's only you because know, we can't I get people it's obvious that I, all I, the voices I, start to sound I, the same. I understand after that for long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was the operative idea, though? Was it there's, not, there's no cartoon out there that's edgy enough, that really is it's satirical enough, that really hits it on the head? Uh, originally, we didn't have that. I mean, that's way too. I mean, that, originally, we were just two guys from Colorado who that's didn't fun. realize you're not supposed to say these words on television. Yeah. We just thought that was funny, and we, we, and we, we were, were we were fans of Beavis and Butthead and The Simpsons, you know. And yeah. we just thought we we just really loved that, and and we were huge fans of Terry Gilliam, you know, from yeah. Monty Python, and that animation where it's just so base, you know, and like that that was really, you know. I think, you know, a lot of people, when they start out, we, we weren't thinking about it too much. We were just thinking, <laughs> how can we go to Hollywood and make a lot of money? You know? <laughs> and, and then it happened. Yeah, and then it worked. So. <laughs> so what are you doing with all the money? Oh, lots of things. <laughs> Boy, it's a it, pretty it, good time. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a big party. It's it's a, yeah, well, it was. It was it's how we slowed down. Yeah, we're slowing down. Now we're old now. There's only so many times you can do certain things. That's true. Exactly, and it's like, we actually, it is, it's a curse and a blessing because, you know, now now we, we won an Emmy, yeah. now we're on Charlie Rose, yeah. it is like, how do you stay punk rock? You know, how do you yeah. stay edgy? How do you, like, how are you the guys giving the middle finger to the world? We like know? edgy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, I mean, you're I Charlie here. Rose is a super edgy show, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, we, it, it is a constant yeah. it's not, We're not the only ones who fight, like a lot of artists you know, fight. We like, the finance minister of India here. That's right? edgy. That's, no, that's edgy. punk rock. That's definitely punk rock. You know, it's totally punk rock. <laughs> so it's, a, it's something that, you know, I'd rather have the money than not, and the success than, than not, not, but it yeah. does create a uh, a mental kind of yeah. game where you have to convince yourself <laughs> constantly that we're at the bottom, we're still hungry, yeah, exactly. we still want to, you know, know. make yeah. people mad. But I, mean, do you, I don't, 
people always talk about burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, it, I don't see that. I mean, I, if you love what you're doing, I don't see where burnout plays a role. What does play a role is what, for example, John, Ch John Cheese once said to me about, money, about uh, faulty towers. Right. He said, he said, we just had no more ideas. Right. We, we found ourselves duplicating ourselves, and that's when we stopped. Yeah. I think that that, and that's always the fear, you know, and actually we've started the last three seasons. At the beginning of the season, every time I've been like, oh, man, because we sat there in the writer's room trying to come up with stuff, and we're out. And I was yeah. like, we're out. We're completely out. <laughs> and then as the season would go, you know, we're like, okay, this Terry Shy with it. What can we do about that? And yeah. end up with a great show, you know, and then the next week, you know, it just sort of keeps ramping up. And I, and we just kept feeling like the seasons were actually getting better. And as long as that was happening, it's not fun to do. And you know what? South Park was never fun to do. It's hard, hard work, you know, and, and what, it's you know, fun to do. it's really not fun to do. And, and, but what the, what the, and what the kids always want to hear, you know, we go on MTV and the kids always want to hear is, yeah, you know, we just get drunk and we get high and we party and we come up with stuff, you know, and it's like, that's not <laughs> no. true. We if, get up really we early. High, and if we right, got drunk, we would be no show run. Right, exactly. Tonight. There'd be nothing on. <laughs> but we go, we get a coffee, we, you know, show up yeah. to work early and we work super hard and almost kill ourselves almost every <laughs> season to try to get yeah. it on the it air. It reminds me of, of, I think Jack Wells tells this story in his book. Jerry, they, they were offering Jerry Seinfeld a hundred million dollars to go one more year. Right. And Seinfeld said, I can't do it. He said, I sat last Christmas Eve in my apartment trying to write a script. Right. And I'm saying, you know, I don't want to do this one more Christmas. Right. And, and I, I, you know, I think that that time may come, but it, it hasn't yet, thank yeah. God. So what, what, what is it you think resonates? Is it the edginess? Is it, what is it that you think has made a connection with people? God, I wish I knew. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't mean, want to intellectualize it either. But I mean, well, yes. I mean, I, I think part of it, I, it, it's not just South Park, but there's a few other shows, and, and we're, we were lucky enough with South Park to hit a level of success early on where we get, we have total control over the show. Now, you mean things like, like Stu, Daily Show or... I think it's Daily Dave Show. Chappelle. Daily Show's a little bit different. Dave Chappelle's a good example. I think uh, there's other shows that are, uh, and most of them are smaller, kind of more marginal shows. That yeah. aren't done by committee. I mean, most yeah. most yeah. shows in Hollywood are done by committee, especially and, comedy. Yeah. Especially yeah. comedy. They're yeah. like it's like a bunch of you know. It's usually a bunch and, of people, and especially movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, movies, yeah. and they have like thirty writers on the focus group. And it's like, for better or worse, Trey and I have always been like, this is our show, and everything on the show is basically yeah. what we want to say. No one tells us, right. you know, what and and it, a show by committee might be a better show. But this is ours, and yeah. I think there's, I don't know, there's something uh, nothing about authentic committees. about it, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's one thing to have teamwork, and, and teams can do great things. Right, we have tons of people working for yeah, us. Exactly. Add a lot teamwork to the show. is great, Absolutely. but, yeah. you know. But at and, the end of the day, it's sort of got to be a voice, you know, and, right. and that's I mean, why you know, we've always fancied ourselves more as a band, just because that's a way cooler thing to be. Than, than so, geeky animators. <laughs> so we've always, we've always, but it really kind of is, because we, every season comes around, it's kind of like an album, and every Every episode in in that album is a song, and it's like we. It's fun because since we did that, since we wrote every episode ourselves, and we never got writers and put it out to them, we're able to look back now and go, "Wow, that's where we were in our lives at that point, and that's where we were in our lives in that point." And I mean, see how we've the changed. The Simpsons has probably been through four, five, six thousand writers. <laughs> thousand <laughs> writers, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and writing teams and yeah. voices, and although there is a few guys who yeah. stick around and are at the top, it, it is a. Uh, the people working on the show today are not the same people who were working on the show yeah. five, six years ago. And, and, you know, for a show like that, it has to be that way for us. Should I feel good that I've been a, both a character on The Simpsons and a character on South Park? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think you should be super flattered. <laughs> makes you super cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, did you once say that you would never go out of ideas because, because Cartman would need 20 years to explain? <laughs> that's a good one. I remember saying that. It does make sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, say it, but you'd be proud to yeah, say it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's funny because it's great. We have it. We're lucky enough that we've created a show where it's not about a family or a kid. It's about a town. Right. You know, and, and in any <laughs> given episode, we can focus on the teacher or we can just focus on Cartman. We can just focus on the mailman. We can just focus on whatever we want. And so it really does lend itself very well to say, you know, we can sit down in the writer's room and go, what's going on in the world? You know, how do we have that happen in South Park? You know, right, because right. to some degree, I think there's a pressure value. You know, people, it, it was really cool to be able to do that Terry Shiloh episode, you know, for it to come on the air when it did, when it was happening, 